Maccabim Rishon, 1 Maccabees 3. Then his son Yahuda, called Maccabee, rose up in his stead, and all his brethren helped him. And so did all they that held with his father. And they fought with cheerfulness the battle of Yashad'ed. So he got his people great honor and put on a breastplate as a giant and girt his warlike harness about him. And he made battles, protecting the host with his sword. In his axe he was like a lion. and like a lion's whelp, roaring for his prey. For he pursued the wicked, and sought them out, and burnt up those that vexed his people. Wherefore of the wicked, rather, wherefore the wicked shrunk for fear of him, and all the workers of iniquity were troubled. Because Yeshua prospered in his hand. He grieved also many kings and made Yaakov glad with his axe. And his memorial is blessed forever. Moreover, he went through the cities of Yahud, destroying the wicked out of them and turning away wrath. From Yashara El. So that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth, and he received unto him such as were ready to perish. Then Apollo Nias gathered the other nations together, and a great host out of Shomoron to fight against Yashara'el. Which thing when Yahuda perceived, he went forth to meet him. And so he smote him and slew him. Many also fell down slain, but the rest fled. Wherefore Yahudah took their spoil, and Apollonius, Apollonius's sword also, and therewith he fought all his life long. Now when Saron, a prince of the army of Aram, heard that Yahuda had gathered unto him a multitude and company of the faithful to go out with him to war. He said, I will get me a name and honor in the kingdom, for I will go fight with Yahuda and them that are with him, who despise the king's commandment. So he made him ready to go up, and there went with him a mighty host of the wicked to help him, and to be avenged of their children of Yashadael. And when he came near to the going up of Beit Choran, Yahuda went forth to meet him with a small company, who, when they saw the host coming to meet them, said unto Yahuda. How shall we be able, being so few, to fight against so great a multitude and so strong, seeing we are ready to faint with fasting all this day? Unto whom Yahuda answered, It is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. And with the Elohim of heaven, it is all one, to deliver with a great multitude or a small company. 
For the victory of battle stands not in the multitude of a host, but strength comes from heaven. They come against us in such pride and iniquity to destroy us, and our women and children, and to spoil us. But we fight for our lives and our Torah. Wherefore, Yahweh himself will overthrow them before our face. And as for you, be ye not afraid of them. Now as soon as he had left off speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them, and so Saron and his host was overthrown before him. And they pursued them from the going down of Bayat Choran unto the plain, where were slain about eight hundred men of them. And the remnant fled into the land of the Pelishtim. Then began the fear of Yahudah and his brethren, and an exceeding great dread to fall upon the nations round about them. So much so as his fame came unto the king, and all nations talked of the battles of Yahudah. Now when King Antichius heard these things, he was full of indignation. Wherefore he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm, even a very strong army. He opened also his treasure, and gave his soldiers pay for a year, commanding them to be ready whensoever he should need them. Nevertheless, when he saw that the money of his treasures failed, and that the tributes in the country were small, because of the dissension and plague which he had brought upon the land in taking away the Torah, which had been of old time. He feared that he should not be able to bear the charges any longer, nor to have such gifts to give so liberally as he did before, for he had abounded above the kings that were before him. Wherefore, being greatly perplexed in his mind, he determined to go into Persia, there to take the tributes of the countries, and to gather much money. So he left Lysias, a nobleman, and one of the blood royal, to oversee the affairs of the king from the river Parath unto the borders of Mitzrayim, and to bring up his son Antichius until he came again. Moreover, he delivered unto him the half of his forces and the elephants, and gave him charge of all things that he would have done, as also concerning them that dwelt in Yahud and Yerushalayim, to wit that he should send an army against them to destroy and root out the strength of Yashadael and the remnant of Yerushalayim and to take away their memorial from that place, and that he should place strangers in all their quarters and divide their land by lot. So the king took half of the forces that remained and departed from Antioch, his royal city, the hundred forty and seventh year, and having passed the river Parath, he went through the high countries. Then Lysias chose Ptolemy, the son of Doramines, Nichanor, and Gorgias, mighty men of the king's friends. And with them he sent forty thousand footmen and seven thousand horsemen to go into the land of Yahud and to destroy it as the king commanded. So they went forth with all their power, and came and pitched by Yamin, rather Yamim, in the plain country. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants, 
and came into the camp to buy the children of Yah El for slaves. The power also of Aram and of the land of the Pelishtim joined themselves unto them. Now when Yahudah and his brethren saw that miseries were multiplied, and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders, for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them, they said one to another, Let us restore the decayed fortune of our people, and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Then was the assembly gathered together, that they might be ready for battle, and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion. Now Yerushalayim lay void as a wilderness. There was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary also was trodden down, and aliens kept the stronghold. The heathen had their habitation in that place, and joy was taken from Yaakov, and the pipe with the harp ceased. Wherefore Yashadael assembled themselves together, and came to Mitzpah, over against Jerusalem. For in Mitzpah was the place where they prayed aforetime in Yashadael. Then they fasted that day, and put on sackcloth, and cast ashes upon their heads, and rent their clothes and laid open the Sefer of the Torah, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They brought also the priests' garments, and the first fruits, and the tithes, and the Nazarim they stirred up, who had accomplished their days. Then cried they with a loud voice toward heaven, saying, What shall we do with these? And whither shall we carry them away? For your sanctuary is trodden down and profaned, and your priests are in heaviness and brought low. And lo, the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. What things they imagine against us, you know. How shall we be able to stand against them, except you, O Elohim, be our help? Then sounded they with shofars, and cried with a loud voice. And after this Yahudah ordained captains over the people, even captains over thousands, and over hundreds, and over fifties, and over tens. But as for such as were building houses, or had betrothed women, or were planting vineyards, or were fearful, those he commanded that they should return, every man to his own house, according to the Torah. So the camp removed and pitched up the south side of Yamim, and Yahudah said, Arm yourselves and be valiant men, and see that ye be in readiness against the morning, that ye may fight with these nations that are assembled together against us to destroy us and our sanctuary. For it is better for us to die in battle than to behold the calamities of our people and our sanctuary. Nevertheless, as the will of Elohim is in heaven, so let him do.